Say what you will about the current takeover at Disney. Former Disney CEO Bob Iger got his job back after a pretty short time in retirement. There are rumors that you could I, become Disney CEO again. Well, that's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Uh, I, well, now he is. This means he's no longer just the predecessor, but also the successor of Bob JPEG, who led Disney in the meantime from 2020 to 2022. There are differing views on JPEG's work at Disney. But in any case, what's really amazing is that someone is actually fired who greenlit one of the best shows ever made. She-Hulk, Attorney at Law. A series that is said to be based on Ellie McBeal, but goes far beyond anything that has ever existed before. Not only in terms of wit and cunning, but also in charm. The various subjects addressed appeal to a broad audience. A completely unprejudiced story is told, which uses absolutely no stereotypes and does not offend anyone in his audience by the use of demeaning jokes or by belittling anyone. No, not at all. After watching She-Hulk, you're actually a little bit smarter than before. Let's take a closer look at what I mean by that exactly. Warning, there will be major spoilers ahead. Glad you tuned in. We start with episode 1, in which Jen's character is introduced. She's a successful lawyer. Yes, but a person's job doesn't necessarily have to do anything with a person's character, I hear critical voices say. Ah, oh, that's phase 3 thinking. We are in phase 4 here, and in phase 4 it's enough for characters to remain bland and without a real personality. <laughs> Who really wants to know about the personality of characters? Like that's what makes a good story. Especially with She-Hulk, with such a strong and well-written script. So Jen is a successful lawyer, and she's good at her job, and she's successful, and she's good at her job. But one day, she has a car accident with her Hulk cousin Bruce, and she gets a little bit of his Hulk blood. A pretty unepic way to become a Hulk? You really become a Hulk because you get Hulk blood on a scratch wound? But wait, wasn't Jen shot in the comics, and Bruce donated his blood to her as the only way to save her? Wasn't that a much more touching and exciting way for a transformation into a She-Hulk? But so what? After all, this isn't about the story itself. It's all about one person, and this person is Jen. Just remember whose show this actually is. So why tell a story in which other people also perform heroic deeds, when that could draw attention away from Jen and her self-centeredness? That wouldn't make any sense. Because it's not so important that Jen is really likable, when everyone around her is rather stupid and has an even blander character than she does. Because then, she looks better anyway and the audience likes her. It's just great storytelling. But back to Jen, who becomes a potentially dangerous Hulk and is therefore trained by Bruce, who has gained control of himself and his transformation after years of hard work. An exciting premise, actually. A person who must learn to control herself, who must transcend her prior life for a greater good. <laughs> Seriously? Jen is a successful lawyer. Do you really think she has to find herself or something? She's completely in control of herself and her life. Finding yourself that is for billionaires and narcissists and adult orphans. So Jen becomes a Hulk and she can do almost everything that Bruce has learned over all those years immediately and of course better and without having to make any sacrifices like years of isolation or something. And why should she consider isolation anyways? Of course not, come on. She's a successful lawyer and what is more important, her career or the lives of innocent civilians? After all, she paid tuition, the bills don't pay themselves. During her time with Bruce, Jen shows a profound understanding and respect of other cultures. Holding your farts, namaste, all day. Pretty much victimizes herself in every scene despite her status as a privileged person who is practically surrounded only by incompetent men. But at least men can be used for one thing, bringing out her anger, which ultimately allows her to become She-Hulk. Thank God. In any case, Jen is back in her job after 20 minutes of screen time, which feels like no more than three days in the episode maximum. And the first episode ends with a super-powered influencer, Titania, just bursting into Jen's courtroom. No one really knows why, but Chen can prove herself and transform into a She-Hulk for the first time in front of everybody. There's a slapstick 30 seconds fight between them and then the episode is over. Excellent script. The tension increases in episode 2. Chen gets fired, drinks and hangs out with the most ignorant family in modern film history, maybe even a little more ignorant than Kevin's family in Home Alone. But unlike Kevin, the scene doesn't affect Chen or the story in any way, because Chen is rehired 5 minutes later without having gone through any kind of change or lesson learned. But that was my fault. She's a superhero, and which superhero goes through any real transformation? Transformation that is for billionaires and narcissists and adult orphans. Oh, and Chen represents Emil Blonsky as a client. Emil who? The guy who played Abomination in The Incredible Hulk 15 years ago. Ah, that guy. Oh my god, how exciting. In episode 3, not only the story gets better, but also the CGI. We also learn a few important things. Just remember whose show this actually is. <laughs> Always good when the protagonist needs to remind the viewers that she's the star of the show. Speaks for an excellent script. And speaking of excellent scripts, the episode is about a shapeshifter who pretends to be a famous rapper and seduces a rather stupid colleague of Chen and rips him off financially. The most exciting story that you've ever seen and that you absolutely must follow up on? Absolutely. 
but it always depends on the subtext, because in reality the episode is high art. We learn an important lesson that we should ponder on some time, just to let it sit a bit. Men are pigs, right women? Without any ifs and buts. No, I can't talk to a 10 about embarrassing man stuff. She could be my next fiance. I love harassing women in the workplace. It's my kick, baby. Okay, sorry. Maybe a little but. If they are not pigs, they are stupid and simple-minded. Maybe it's time to abolish men altogether. We live in the 21st century, after all. Episode 3 is also the episode where Jen does her infamous twerk with the rapper. Just like serious lawyers do in their offices. You have to have fun sometimes. Episode 4 continues with exciting storylines. It's about a magician who abuses magic in his shows and unwittingly brings demons through a portal into his theater in Los Angeles. Why, when after 5 minutes the problem is solved in a lukewarm CGI spectacle at the end and we never see the magician in the series again? Could this have something to do with the fact that Wong should get a little more screen time to remind the viewers of better times? But no. Why should it be? We are dealing with an excellent script here and it would never contain any far-fetched main storylines just to buy time and fit another superficial, supposedly funny B story into a superhero story. While we can't breathe because of all the excitement, we can also laugh about the completely cliché-free portrayal of a woman who probably doesn't have a high degree and also at judges who let the decisions be influenced by the presence of pets. The B or the side story is heartwarming. Chen wants to date as Chen but doesn't get any matches. Haha, <laughs> yes exactly. As if every halfway decent looking woman in Los Angeles had the same problems as my friend Egan from school. Whatever, no one wants Jen. Which, from a storytelling perspective, is probably meant to make us feel sorry for her? Is Jen being reduced to her looks by the screenwriters right now? Or are we just being told that Jen's character sucks so much that nobody wants to meet her? No, 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 no. We should simply sit back and trust the screenwriters. Have you seen the show already? What are your thoughts on it? Please let me know in the comments down below. Anyway, Chen scores better as She-Hulk and keeps getting date after date because there are obviously quite a few interesting fetishes out there. Oh, and we learn one more important thing. Men are pigs, right women? Can I buy you sexy ladies a round of drink? What? And when Chen then turns back into normal the morning after, the pediatrician, who looks like an ex-con, doesn't want her anymore either. It's funny that someone with a fairly distinct sexual inclination hasn't completely forgotten about this inclination the next morning and doesn't just go back to the normal standard woman. Jen obviously thought so. Jen is really a poor woman. Not because she's a little stupid, but because the world is against her. In addition to all the depth of the topics addressed in the episode so far, the series now steps it up a notch. We learn that Jen might not be such a good liar after all, that she simply forgot to trademark the name She-Hulk and her name is now being used by Titania Yes, Titania, the terrifying influencer with superpowers for a successful makeup brand. Pretty clever move from Titania and pretty stupid of Jen? Basically yes, but Jen is good and Titania is bad, of course, and so Jen is the victim. Jen gets help from another very successful fellow attorney, who we are supposed to admire in one scene and pity in the next because she has to work so hard to be successful, because she has a hard life working in a well-paying lawyer job. Certainly harder than her male colleagues, who can only be mediocre at best anyway. He could never have gone through that. He's never had to prove his value to a parade of underwhelming men. <laughs> right? You could have literal superpowers and some guy with an internet connection will still think he can do better. <laughs> oh my god, the things we put up with. What? But yay, Chen wins the case and gets to keep the name She-Hulk, I'm so happy. Oh, and I haven't even mentioned it yet, Chen is getting new clothes from her tailor. Important information? Not really if you think about it, but the tailor story takes up a big part of the episode, so I just wanted to mention it. Because everything that happens in the series has to have substance, otherwise it wouldn't be in the series. Right? The showrunners know what they are doing. <laughs> the final episodes of She-Hulk will have a second video dedicated to them, because there's a lot to talk about the finale, that's for sure. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. Stay tuned and see you in the next video.